Hello. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the Spanish opening. Uh, so recently uh, I published a book about the Spanish opening on Kindle. Um, it's um, It covers quite a few uh, variations of the Spanish opening. So it talks about uh, uh, the open variation, uh, and the Miller, the Zaitsev, uh, and different lines of the Chigorin. So today I'm gonna look at a game by Avishi Anand, the current world champion, uh, that was played in the Zaitsev variation, and he illustrated quite well uh, the ideas of this um, of this line and and how to handle it for white. So we're gonna go through the uh, the opening moves of the game. This is the Spanish opening so far, and uh, in this main line. Uh, the Zaitsev is characterized um, by rook e8 um, and bishop b7. These are the two moves that are really aiming to put the pressure on the e4 square. Um, and so uh, this pawn will, uh, it's already being attacked by the knight. Once the bishop retreats to uh, f8, then the rook will put the pressure, and then the bishop will also come out to to b7 and also try to put the pressure on this e4 pawn. So that's the idea. Um, and against that, um, um, the line I'm recommending in the book is to play pawn to d5. And now, um, uh, the idea of this move is to occupy space and um, and later black will try to free himself up by playing c6 and then and the, this should potentially open up this bishop on this diagonal and uh, and give white the, some control over the d5 square and that square will become crucial as we will see so uh, here before black plays pawn to c6, um, he first drives away this bishop, and that's a good idea. Uh, in the book, I also look at the pawn to c6 move instead of knight c5, but here we're going to look at knight c5. So now I'm going to go to the next page. Um, and as I mentioned, black's idea is to undermine the pawn on d5. White um, White could take on, on c6, but first he drives away uh, the knight. And now this knight has to go to a, a passive square. Not like he can't go to e6, now he has to go to d7. And now white takes. And now white goes bishop g5, and here we get the position on this diagram. Um, the idea behind bishop g5 is to end, end of white's following moves is to really put the pressure on this knight on f6 and, and to fight for the control over the d5 square. And we'll see how crucial is that square in this line. Um, so, so black tries to drive away that the bishop and white exchanges voluntarily the bishop for the knight. Again, he takes with the knight to, to, to control d5 and now white exchanges another defender of that square. Black takes. And in the position we get here, it's it's the main line of this um, um, of this line. It, it's the main position of this line of the d5 line. Um, so here, White is planning to advance this knight to the d5 square, uh, if possible, and he'd like to establish that knight. So he'd like to swap these these bishops and establish the strong knight on on d5. And and we'll see that this isn't very easy, but it's not impossible. Um, the down so uh, so both sides uh, here have um, a couple of weak pawns. So black has a weak pawn on d6, uh, as I explained, and white has a somewhat weak pawn on c3. Uh, so the position is fairly balanced, but white manages to outplay his opponent. Um, so bishop to b3. Attacking f7, um, naturally black defends, and white also defends the pawn. 
And uh, notice that nobody wants to to capture, like white does not want to take on a6 and black does not want to take on b3 because that would just improve the opponent's pawn structure. Um, and, and this is really the crucial move of the game um, that uh, white plays next. Uh, here he could have tried to say um, exchange and um, uh, take back on b4 but this would be very good because black would then completely free himself up and he would attack the pawn with the bishop and uh, he would also get rid of the weak pawn so black would be completely fine here so instead of playing this very natural move Anand plays I think a brilliant move he ignores the fact that white, the black just took his pawn and he sacrifices that pawn for the sake of activating his knight and he plays knight to e3 and now even though he'll be down a pawn temporarily he'll have this really beautiful uh, piece this knight on d5 and that knight will compensate for um, a lot of the downside of, for the missing pawn basically um, so of course black takes back he has to win this pawn at least so that he's suffering for something and uh, Black is really hoping to free up the bishop and to possibly exchange on, on e3, but white doesn't let that happen, so he runs away. And now this knight is really a monster here. And white also has two open files, and it's really difficult to neutralize that pressure. Um, uh, black uh, has also weak pawn on, on b5, so white is putting some pressure on that. Um, and um, with his next uh, moves, White also begins to improve his position elsewhere, and he's trying to restrict this dark squared bishop, which really is is constrained both by his own pawns and by um, White's pawns. Like this White pawn from G3 now will be taking away some pretty important squares from that bishop. Um, so the bishop has to go away, hoping to find a place on the queen side. Uh, but there isn't really a good spot. And now also h4, taking away the g5 square. Um, and now here black played a slightly inaccurate move. It's probably better to play just rook to c1 here. Um, instead he played rook to c5 and, and um, here Anand takes over. He goes knight to e3. It's very unexpected for a piece to go back, but now d6 is, is under the fire. Um, and now suddenly also the, the b5 pawn is a target because the rook can't really st stay defending it, and um, it also can't go to c6 because then the pawn just falls. So the rook has to go away, and now white plays rook to b6, and now this pawn is weak, uh, and it's falling down. And white's going to have an excellent very strong passed pawn, supported by the beautiful knight from d5, and black is left with a horrible bishop. So from here on it was um, fairly easy to uh, to convert. So black hopes to maybe create some counterplay, uh, but it's pretty much impossible. And, and here uh, um, black has no defense against the spawn advancing, and even though the material is even at the moment, uh, Kasim Janov, uh, uh, who used to be a FIDE world champion as well, he just realized that the spawn will go up the board and he can't stop it, and he resigned. So, um, a very nice game from Anand that shows how to take advantage of the d5 uh, square in, in this line of the Zaitsev. Uh, the line to remind you is when white plays pawn to d5. Um, so as I mentioned the book uh, covers uh, quite a few lines. There's another game on the on the Zeitz of variation um, and there's quite a few puzzles um, and I'll add the link to the book in the video description. Thanks for watching.